The Batman is shortly approaching us, and there are five Batman comics that I believe that you should either read before or after, depending on when you're watching this video, because the Batman, like I said, I've seen it already. I've put up my non-spoiler review on the channel. You can go check that out right down there or up above, and I love the movie. But there's a lot about the Batman that I feel like is so heavily inspired by Batman comics, especially the crime noir feeling that we get inside of it. And it's that detective nature that I'm so happy Matt Reeves was able to emphasize and put in here. But when people think of Batman, a lot of them think of that action. And I do want to dive into five comics that I think all of you guys should read once again for the Batman. So it's going to be a fun video, guys. Make sure to leave your guys' comments. Have you read these before? What are some that you think I missed? I know a lot of you guys, Batman Court of Owls is not in here. I almost thought about putting in it but after seeing the movie i feel like that's more of just a fun suggestion because it's one of the best batman comics out there as well as the last thing i do want to say is hit that like and subscribe button because we have tons of batman content coming up very soon of course starting at my number five it is batman the long halloween now very much just from watching the trailer and seeing this mystery that batman is trying to unravel that is the long halloween very much an early batman career what is he trying to do he's trying to solve a murder mystery who is taking out all these big crime syndicates catwoman Car carmine falcone tons of other batman villains showcase in here but as well it all takes place over a long halloween night where the batman does center around not the holiday per se, but around this same time period. But the thing that I absolutely love about The Long Halloween that I think the movie gets so well is the crime noir aspect of who Batman is. He is a detective, the world's greatest detective, in fact. And that is what he's doing in here, using his mind, his cleverness to solve this mystery before it is too late. And for me, the Batman itself, the movie that Matt Reeves just made, does the exact same thing. And I think The Long Halloween is one of the best best interpretations of showing what Batman is is that he is a true detective. Next, we have Batman Zero Year. Now, I absolutely think that now this does take place technically in his first year, but they call it Zero Year because part of the story is not Batman, it's absolutely Bruce Wayne before he's Batman and absolutely trying still trying to make a change, but as well because this is Batman New 52 before and after year one had already happened, so they didn't want to copy that. The other thing about Zero Year that is so damn important and honestly awesome is that the Riddler is absolutely one of the main villains of this entire story, and you get a lot of Riddler in here, as well as this post-apocalyptic kind of version of Batman, this more Wastelander type thing that we are seeing a little bit of a tease at inside the Batman trailers. And there's a lot in here that you kind of get into the mind of who the Riddler is, and for me, I was never a big Riddler guy growing up, but after seeing the movie, really, really love the Riddler in there. But I also love the comic interpretation of him in here because it's very interesting. And seeing Batman and the Riddler and the way that they kind of face off with one another is one of the more intriguing aspects of this entire comic. In general, a lot of the themes and stuff that absolutely happen in here might correlate in parallel to what happens inside the Batman. I was overall very impressed with this one, and out of all the comics I was very much recommended to read before watching the Batman, this is one of the ones that surprised me the most. My up next is Batman Year One. Now, the comic style for this is probably one of my favorites out of all of the ones that I'm telling you guys today, but as well, this is Year One Batman. But the thing I love about this is that it parallels not just Batman's kind of up and coming, Bruce Wayne coming back to Gotham City, but it's also about Commissioner Gordon. Well, before he was Commissioner Gordon, how he, his trials and tribulations through a corrupt Gotham City. Love, love, love this comic. Again, kind of the same stuff I said about Zero Year, how it is the early risings of Batman and him trying to figure out who he is. But what I love about this is it kind of has that angst, that darkness that, of course, the Batman does have. But one thing I forgot to mention in Zero Year that I love is the way that you can totally tell that Bruce Wayne doesn't really want to be Bruce Wayne. He wants to be Batman. And watching the Batman movie, you will very much see that this version of Bruce Wayne does not care to be Bruce Wayne. He wants to be the Batman. And I love how this and Zero Year very much hone in on that level, that psychological level. Speaking of psychological levels, Batman Ego and the Other Tales. Now, I had not read this until Matt Reeves has said this is one of the heaviest major inspirations that he had for making this Batman movie. And after reading this, it is incredible. Not just Darwin Cook, but everyone involved with making this. The comic style, amazing. 
But the other thing I love about this is the way that it kind of dives into Batman's psyche as a whole, the heart of darkness that he has, and the way that, you know, Batman has a lot of anger built up in him. So what does Batman ego show? It showcases that, but how does he not cross that line into killing? Because once you do, you become just like them. It's very much a deep dive into Batman's psychological nature, and I was heavily impressed with this one. My number five is probably a comic you have not heard of yet. It is very new. It is called Batman the imposter now i'm gonna be honest i don't know if this is actually like a prequel to the batman i don't think it is but it is actually written by one of the original writers for this movie and is also a really big friend to matt reeves and that is batman the imposter once again and the thing i love about this and the reason i very much recommend it is not just because it's a great batman comic but i do love the art style but this is a batman comic that hones in what is batman to the city of gotham and the movie of the Batman touches on this very much so, but this comic also does. What does he symbolize? Does he symbolize hope, vengeance, heroism? What is he? What does he inspire? Who does he inspire? This shows that. And for me, there are a lot of twists and turns in this that I absolutely love. And I feel like for me, this takes place again earlier in his career. And I'm starting to kind of get into those those early Batman comics to where to seeing how he really much was not just in the middle of his career, the back half of his but very much the start of it all. For me, this comic is very haunting in its nature in the way that it really much gravitates to what Batman is again to Gotham City. Guys, that's my top five Batman comics you should read before either watching the Batman or after watching the Batman. I'm sure a lot of you guys are probably waiting for that, so I'll put some Amazon links down below so you guys can go check those out. Very much recommend these because I've had a blast reading them over the last couple of months, and I think a lot of you guys probably will as well. So again, leave your guys' comments down below. I know there's tons of other comics, and if you guys do like this video, maybe I'll start doing more comics to read before movies come out, or in general, right after they are about to come out. So hit that like and subscribe button, comment down below, and of course, until next time, stay classy.